How do you feel when people buy your program and don't do anything? How do you feel? Well, I do this all the time anyway. Like, I do it, so I know what it's like. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not upset when people do it, but yeah, it happens. People buy my program and they're like, yeah, Ted, I want to do this. It sounds good. I really want to make this happen. I want to create my own ebook, create my own course, create my own coaching program. I want to start making 10 grand a month online. This is what I want to do. And they sign up and I never hear from them again. Never hear from them again. And you might think that's crazy, but they just paid you like a few thousand dollars and they're not doing anything. Yep. So what did I do when this was happening in my program? I, I uh, created a two-step procedure to make sure that this doesn't happen. And what we do now to prevent this from happening or to at least lessen the chance of this happening, because it still happens even though we have this procedure in place. What we do now is when someone signs up, they instantly get like a private one-on-one -on -one call with one of our coaches. And then right after they get that one of the private one-on-one -on -one calls with that coach, they also get a private one-on-one -on -one call with me. And we just work with them privately to get them going. But it doesn't seem to uh, make a difference. Like whether we work with them out of the gates privately or whether they just come in and they don't get that private one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't make a difference. Because we have people come into our program who don't get any private one-on-one -on -one and they crush it. They just take it by the reins and they go for it and they, they do very well. And the other students come in and they do get the help with us privately, but they still don't do anything. Like they just don't show up. And so I'm thinking, it's, well, it's not, it's not those private one-on-one -on -one calls and it's not those introductory calls and that's not the make or break factor. <clears throat> so we're probably gonna get rid of those. We're probably going to get rid of those. The make or break factor, what I'm finding is that people just got so much other shit going on in their life that they're not willing to sacrifice. I can only get my work done if I don't have something else going on at the same time. So like right now, I mean, I have to leave in like half hour or 10 minutes. I can leave in 10 minutes because I have something else going on. I have to go pick up my car from the, the cleaner. It's getting detailed. But I'd rather work, but I can't because I got to go pick up the car. So that's just one small example. And after the, that, I'm going to the gym. Um, and that's taking, me away, that's taking me away from my work. But it's a good thing. I, I need the car cleaned. I need to go to the gym anyway, so it's fine. But it's just a good example. Like when I'm doing those things, I can't be working. And most people, their whole day, their whole calendar, their whole schedule for the day is full of those errands. Their whole day is full of doing shit like that. And they have so many obligations. They got to do this with their brother, or this with their dad, or this with their mom, or this with their cousin, or this with their boyfriend, or this with their girlfriend, or this with their kid. And like, they have, and this with their volunteer team and everything. There's so many different things going on in their life. And like, as you notice, I've sat here for the past three hours and 20 minutes answering questions, doing nothing but this. There's nothing else going on. I don't have a dog running around, a kid running around, or wife calling to me, or friends calling me. Like, there's nothing going on. My phone's on airplane mode. All my other tabs are closed down. It's just me for three hours and 20 minutes here answering questions. Like, this is what it takes to get work done. You just have to sit down and do the work. And so, when people join our program and don't put in the work, because they're not sitting down to do the work because they have all these other things going on. But if they do, were to just eliminate all those other things, it'd be a lot easier for them to sit down and do this work. So rather than give people one-on-one -on -one private sessions with me and coach, still might do that. We're probably going to phase it out though, honestly, because it hasn't, like, that hasn't been the, the needle mover for people. But the main thing I want to get people to do right away as soon as they sign up is just commit. First, get clear on what is actually what they're actually doing every day. Like, I need to write a big list of all the shit that they do every day, and then commit to cutting out like eighty percent of that list. They have to commit to cutting out eighty percent of that list because the only thing you can spend time doing if you want to succeed with your business is your business. 
and your health and I'm sure your most important relationships, but like good 80% of your life needs to be to your business now. Otherwise, just don't see how the hell you're going to get ahead or get anything done really. So how I feel about people joining and not doing any work, well, it just happens. I mean, I do that all the time with programs too. I buy programs, I don't touch them. I just want to have them. I want to have access to them, but I don't actually want to go in there and do anything. I bought so many programs. In fact, I have a document on Google Docs called Everything I Bought. It's just a big list of all the stuff I bought that I've never used. Maybe I've logged in once or something, but I just like spent like tens of thousands of dollars on different programs and coaching programs I've never actually used. Like, whoa, that's an understatement. It's not tens of thousands. It's like well over $30,000 in coaching programs I've never used. I just bought them to have them. So when other people do it with our program, I know it's, it's just part of being human. It's unfortunate. It's not what we want, but um, it's just what humans do sometimes. And if they if they don't, it's it's, it's like it's like a dating. It's like dating someone. Like if if I'm gonna go on a date with a girl, I'm gonna say, "Hey, I'll meet you at Starbucks," and she doesn't show up. If she doesn't show up. I got showed up. I'll go home. Like I don't. I'm, I'm good. It's okay. She doesn't show up. Fine. I'll go on. So if a student says, hey, I want to work with you, I'm like, cool, let's do it. And I show up and they don't show up. I'm like, okay, fine. They're not, they're not as serious as, uh, as I thought or they don't need me like I thought they needed me or whatever. Maybe just now is not the best time and maybe they'll come back in a few months or something when it is a better time. <laughs>